So what we've been doing so far is building up our arsenal, right? Build, building up the different types of techniques we have to break down polynomials, to factor polynomials, right? So, so far we've talked about, uh, when it comes to numbers, breaking down numbers into their prime factors, right? right. So we can break down numbers uh, from the real number set into their prime factors, and mainly we apply this to the rational numbers, right? So we can just break things down into their prime factors. We've talked about the GCF. We've talked about the GCF, the greatest common factor. So any, any multiple terms together, you know, added or subtracted together, we look at the multiple terms and see what's common between them, grouping them out, right? We've talked about the difference of squares. We've talked about the difference of squares where two things subtracted from each other, we can factor them into the square root of one minus the square root of second, square root of one plus the square root of second. And we've talked about simple trinomial factor and trinomials are of the following form, right? So trinomials are of the following form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot equal zero, and for simple trinomials, a has to be equal to one, right? So for simple trinomial factors, the, one we, the ones we've done so far, a does not equal zero, because if a equals zero, this would no longer be a quadratic equation, this would disappear, right? So we want the x squared term in there. And we've done the simple trinomial where a is equal to one. So basically what we have is of this form. It's x squared plus b c plus b x plus c. And these ones we know how to factor. Uh, and we've already talked about, right? So what we're gonna talk about right now is complex trinomial factoring, where a is not equal to one. So a can't equal zero and a doesn't equal to one because if it equaled one, that's a simple trinomial fact. That's a simple trinomial and we factor those things, right? So what we're gonna start talking about now is factoring complex trinomials. And complex trinomials are the form, or the following form where a doesn't equal zero and a doesn't equal one. So we actually end up with a number, a coefficient in front of the x squared, okay? The one thing you gotta be careful with is if there's a number in front of the x squared, what you should look for is the GCF first. Because the GCF, you always look for that first. Because if you can take out a greatest common factor, out of, you know, if, if there's a number in front of the x squared, and if you can take the greatest common factor out, and you can get x squared by itself, just by the G GCF method, then that just becomes a simple trinomial. A trinomial and we've already talked about those, right? So basically, we're gonna start talking about factoring trinomials where we can't take the A out just by taking out the GCF, okay? The method that I use to factor complex trinomials, um, I think is referred to the four-step method, or that's the, that's, the, that's the name we came up with, right? In general, most uh, teachers that I've encountered um, from, you know, uh, from students from different, different schools is what they end up using, what they, teach, uh, what they teach their students, or most schools in the curriculum, but in my area anyway, they teach them to do the, uh, what's it called, the decomposition, okay? Now, decomposition, I don't like it. Uh, I actually hate it. It's, 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 not a, it's not a really an algorithm, right? Because what you have to do, it's the way it works is, you split up the BX term into two terms. And what you have to do is group the, you know, the first term that you split it up with, with the AX squared, and the other term you split, uh, you split it up with the C, and then, you know, you have, that's sort of a guessing part, or a calculated guessing part, I guess. You know, the more you do, the easier it becomes. And then you factor out that way, and it's, it's, it's not an algorithm. It's not, it, it, you know, it, it takes, you know, you have to take a step back and think about what you're gonna do. I don't like that. The way I like doing, especially factoring with things that are just automatic, you're just breaking things down. Uh, I like doing them, doing them through an algorithm, basically. I like doing them uh, in a way where there's no thought process involved. I like to have the pen or the chalk in the wall, or, you know, if you're doing a pen and paper, I like to have the pen and the paper do my thinking for me, and I just like, like it to become a routine where you break things down and it's just you know, automatic. You do the same thing all the time, okay? And the way I factor these is using the four-step method. I'm not gonna teach decomposition. If there's enough people that want decomposition taught, you know, I'll, you know, I'll come back to this and uh, you know, make a video to teach the decomposition. But what I'm gonna do is teach the four-step method. Now, 
one warning with the four-step method. I've had students that, uh, you know, go to their classrooms and the teacher has never seen the four-step method. And I've had students where they write, you know, a complex trinomial quiz or an exam. And because they use the four-step method, the teacher, even though they get all the right answers, the teacher marks all the questions wrong because they didn't use decomposition. And, um, you know, I encountered this with a few students and I was uh, quite upset about it. So I went online and I did a little search for a proof and I, you know, this is many moons ago and I, there, there was a proof that I came across where it showed how the, how the four-step method worked and it, it works all the time. I've never had it not work. And from the proof, if I, you know, if I recall correctly, you know, it, it proved that it works all the time. Now, if you're having problems uh, in school, in the class that you're in, where your teacher doesn't like this method that I'm about to teach you, uh, you know, drop me a line and I'll dig up the proof again. Or, you know, show them this video, you know, tell them how it works, where you learned it and it works all the time and it's 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 a very quick algorithm it's so big warning for you know the complex trinomial information coming up um, it's uh, I haven't seen too many teachers or too many, too many schools use it so uh, make sure your teacher is okay with you using this process and if they're not okay with it using it you know get them to explain to you why they're not okay with it okay and if there's a good reason that they're not okay with it then you know so be it. You're going to have to use their method, which is decomposition in general, for what I've seen. Okay, if they don't have a good reason that you can't use it, you know, get into a little discussion with them and see see if they'll be okay if you end up using it. Okay, they might like it because it's. Uh, I find it to be simpler than the decomposition method. Okay, so let's go do a quick example, uh, just a simple example, and then from there we'll do a couple more uh, more complicated examples.